I heard a thousand blended notes while in a grove I sate reclined, in that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to mind. To her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran, and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. Through primrose tufts in that green bower the periwinkle trailed its wreaths, and tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The birds around me hopped and played, their thoughts I cannot measure, but the least motion which they made it seemed a thrill of pleasure. The budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air, and I must think, do all I can, that there was pleasure there. If this belief from heaven be sent, if such be nature's holy plan, have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? What strong allurement draws, what spirit guides thee, Vesper, brightening still as if the nearer thou comest to a man's abode, the spot grew dearer night after night? True is it, Nature hides her treasures less and less. Man now presides in power where once he trembled in his weakness. Science advances with gigantic strides. But are we aught enriched in love and meekness? Aught dost thou see, bright star of pure and wise, more than in humbler times graced human story, that makes our hearts more apt to sympathize with heaven, our souls more fit for future glory, when earth shall vanish from our closing eyes, ere we lie down in our last dormitory? Wisdom and spirit of the universe, thou soul that art the eternity of thought, and givest to forms and images a breath and everlasting motion, not in vain. By day or starlight thus from my first dawn of childhood didst thou intertwine for me the passions that built up our human soul, not with the mean and vulgar works of man, but with high objects and enduring things, with life and nature, purifying thus the elements of feeling and of thought, and sanctifying by such discipline both pain and fear, until we recognize a grandeur in the beatings of the heart. Nor was this fellowship vouchsafed to me with stinted kindness in November days when vapors rolling down the valleys made a lonely scene more lonesome among the woods. At noon and mid the calm of summer nights when by margin of the trembling lake beneath the gloomy hills homeward I went in solitude. Such intercourse was mine. Mine was it in fields both day and night and by waters all the summer long. And in the frosty season, when the sun was set, and visible for many a mile, the cottage windows through the twilight blazed, I heeded not the summons. Happy time! It was, indeed, for all of us, for me, it was a time of rapture, clear and loud, the village clock tolled six. I wheeled about, proud and exulting, like an untired horse, that cares not for his home, all shod with steel, his hissing along the polished ice in games confederate imitative of the chase, and woodland pastures, the resounding horn, the pack-loud chiming, and the hunted hare. So through the darkness and cold we flew, and not a voice was idle, with the din smitten with precipices rang aloud, the leafless trees and every icy crag tinkled like iron, while far distant hills into the tumult sent an alien sound of melancholy, not unnoticed while the stars eastward were sparkling clear, and in the west the orange sky of evening died away. Not seldom from the uproar I retired into a silent bay or sportively glanced sideway, leaving the tumultuous throng to cut across the reflex of a star image that, flying still before me, gleamed upon the glassy plain, and oftentimes when we had given our bodies to the wind, and all the shadowy banks on either side came sweeping through the darkness, spinning still, 
the rapid line of motion then at once have i reclining back upon my heels stopped short yet still the solitary cliffs wheeled by me even as if the earth had rolled with visible motion her diurnal round behind me did they stretch in solemn train feebler and feebler and i stood and watched till all was tranquil as a summer sea